I'm Ian from Ian Taylor Trekking. Uh, I've been lucky enough to climb Everest to the top. I've been up Island Peak 15 times and up Mirror Peak many times, up Kilimanjaro 30 times and climbed and trekked and skied all over the world. So today I'm going to talk about uh, what you should pack for an Island Peak trip. Now there's no kind of one size fits all. Like this year I was on Island Peak twice, uh, a month apart in terms of the summits and the temperature was drastically different on the later trip. So you got to think about yourself. Your, how you deal with the cold uh, in terms of what gear you use. But I'm going to show you what I bring and then we can help you kind of pick and choose what gloves, what boots are going to work for you. We have like a 45 page dossier that'll help you kind of go through each piece of the kit to make sure you're bringing the right stuff. But this is just a guideline to help you kind of understand what to bring. So I'll start with my backpack. Um, for Island Peak, um, I have a, this is a 44 liter backpack. Uh, sometimes I have a larger one, depending on the trip, depending on how much I think I'm going to have to carry up and down the mountain. Um, but in terms of the backpack, you need to have a backpack that's matched to you. So you can go into any outdoor store, they'll match the backpack to you. You want to make sure you have um, good waist straps because you want to be carrying most of the weight on your hips and not up on your shoulders. Um, in this backpack every day though, you're going to have a range of gear. So you're going to have uh, Gore-Tex pants. Uh, I use these on the summit night. I use them when it's raining. Uh, you always want to have them in your backpack with you. So I'll put these in here and they never leave that backpack. Uh, same again with the top. I have a Gore-Tex top that'll go over most of my layers if I do need it. Um, this is Burkhaus, lots of different brands. Uh, some of them are lighter weight now. So you, there's a range of different options in terms of the right gear. Um, so always have that in. In my backpack, um, I'll slot that over here. I usually have a couple of two trekking poles with me, sometimes one. Um, these are a lightweight brand. Um, they've got the core candle for extra comfort and you definitely need them for when you're going down steps, at least on the trail all the way back down. Um, saving your knees as much as you possibly can. Good to have trekking poles, good to be used to using them um, and good to have with you. So that's that. From here, um, I use uh, this mountaineering boot, so La Sportiva G2SM. It's overkill uh, for the warmer months, but I don't want to have three or four different types of mountaineering boots uh, for the same trip. Um, super warm, super light. Um, They've got an inner boot, so when it's cold at night in the tent, let's say high in, the, in high camp on Island Peak, I can sleep in the inner. So my, foot, my feet are in the sleeping bag, keeping them warm, and then I can slot into the outer boot so my feet don't go cold. Great boot. Trying to pick the right boot for you, we can help you do that. A lot of people use La Sportiva, Nepal Evos. Um, there's a range of different boots, and it's just trying to find the one that works for you, depending on what future trips you're going to be doing. This is what I use, though. In terms of hiking boots, I use a range of different boots because I'm like last year I did 11 trips. So I'll mix and match the boots that I'm using. These are a Mendel uh, vacuum. Um, I use a La Sportiva Tarango GTX. I use the Salmon Quest uh, boots. Lots of good boots out there. We have recommendations for like our top six on a blog. We can share it with you. Um, but you need to have well worn in hiking boots, rigid, warm. You need these. I also have a pair of trail shoes. So when I finish in camp every day, uh, we get into a lodge or we're arriving into, the, into camp, I want to be able to switch out of my trekking boots into a, um, just a trail shoe. So I have just these are regular trail runners. You can use salmon, trainers, whatever you want. Um, but these are nice to have. I always have a pair of those in with me. So from the bottom up, uh, in terms of what I will bring with me, I'll have a range of different socks. Uh, I usually have one pair of the kind of thicker summit socks that'll go my mountaineering boots alongside um, kind of a see-through lightweight liner um, that I can use. So I use kind of these two together for the summit. Um, I use um, a range of different kind of trekking socks. So lightweight, midweight, thicker weight, depending on the temperatures, because you're going to go from warm all the way to cold and then back down to warm again. So you, you need to have a mix of socks. You don't want to have just these kind of these thicker uh, trekking socks. They'll be 
destroyed um, just because you'd be sweating so much in them. So it's good to have a range of, a range of different socks. Um, I'll have these, I'll have oh, maybe four or five pairs of just mid-weight, lightweight trekking socks. And then I always have like a fresh pair of warmer socks. So when I arrive into camp, I can switch into, um, into, my, into my shoes with these, kind of, and they're kind of fresh all the time. So I'm not using smelly socks into the smelly shoes. And then everything just gets smelly. So Merino socks are great. Uh, so from there up underneath, I'll have a range of kind of um, underwear. These ones are Icebreaker, Merino. Um, smart wall are a little bit thicker these ones there's a range of different options some people like to bring three pairs some people like to bring ten pairs uh, you can wash them in Namche you can wash them on the trail I don't know four or five pairs is probably right for females males are going to be different so just think about that option but merino is the way to go in terms of underwear um, lower down on the trail you're arriving into Lukla, you're hiking up through Namche. We spent three nights in Namche before going higher for climatization. So it's gonna be warmer down there and you're gonna, you're gonna need a pair of, good pair of trekking uh, shorts. Um, these are flexible, lightweight, washable, and they dry quickly. I usually have one pair of shorts. Um, I usually have one pair of trekking pants. Some people like to bring two. Some people like to bring trekking pants that have a cut off so they can wear them as shorts then they can wear them as trekking pants and then they have a spare pair of pants so they have two trekking pants with them uh, i normally bring one probably better off having two depending on what your experience level is and uh, just mixing matching pants you don't be wearing the same ones the whole time uh, depends on your comfort level um, i also have these kind of fleece pants when i arrive into camp at night you know i want to have um, something comfortable to change into. So I've, you know, I have a new pair of socks, I have a new pair of underwear that I use. I have these to kind of use in and around the lodges and in and around the tents. Um, always good to be comfortable. So I'll always have these as a switch over pant. Um, I'll also have the, these are 260 Merino base layer. Um, I'll use these for sleeping in base camp, in Island Peak base camp, sleeping in high camp, um, I'll use them on the summit night. I'll usually use these mixed in with my Gore-Tex pants as my kind of system for going up high on the mountain. Very useful. You need a pair of these um, and I use them all the time. So that's those. Um, coming from my bottoms up a little bit higher to my core, um, which is super important, your hands, your feet, and your core, you need to really manage correctly in terms of temperatures. So lower down on the trail, it's gonna be warm. As it, I use like Merino t-shirts. I'll probably have two or three of these uh, with me, different, so I can use them on different days, so I don't look like I'm uh, just using the same clothes all the time, uh, which I am. But uh, good to have two or three pair, two, two or three t-shirts. You can mix and match these, you can also clean them um, in the mountains on the way up. We spend three nights in Namche, two nights in Dingboche. You got more time. We go into Island Peak Base Camp for two nights before we even move higher. So there's plenty of time to wash clothing and dry it out. Um, so I'll definitely use the Merino t-shirts. Um, on top of that, I'll have usually two, um, two base layers. This one has a hood. Sometimes if it's really cold, if I was there in November, or early December, you know, you definitely want to have those thicker layers. If you're going to be there late September into early October, it mightn't be as warm, but all these things can be mixed and matched. You can use t-shirts, you can use um, the thicker merino, we've got fleece, we've got down. You, can, you need to have all these layers to kind of make sure you're covering all bases in terms of temperatures. But I like this one, it's a 200 icebreaker merino. Sleeping, walking, I like to have it. This is the same as the bottoms that I have, a 260, um, icebreaker merino. I use it on the summit night. Um, I use it for sleeping. Super useful. Always worth having a couple of these because I can use the merino and then I have different vest options. If I go with this kind of synthetic um, vest option or if I go with a down option, I got a down vest. I can put the merino under the vest. Then I have 
my fleece on top of that, and then I have a big down jacket that I can use. And I'll talk about the down jacket too, but between all these layers, it kind of, you can kind of mix and match to make sure that, you, you know, you're, you're warm when you need to be, and you've got all these layers available for the right temperatures. So the lighter, the better, because if you're going to put this in your day pack, along with some other layers, you want to make sure that it's as, as light as possible because you could be carrying all sorts of equipment with you too. So th you got to think about which is going to work for you. Sometimes I use the down, depending on the month. Most of the time I'm using this layer, uh, just synthetic. And I can use that lower down in the trail too with the kind of the longer base layers if I needed to. So that's what I will use um, on my core. And then the fleece that I use, this one is getting old and anyone that knows me will have seen me in it many times. Um, but it's nice to have this vest, merino, all these different options. Uh, this one has a hood, not, not always necessary, but light, durable and warm is what you're looking for. So I'll always have that. These are the layers, possibly the down. So from there, uh, you kind of extremities are important. We talked about the boots. We'll talk about hands. Um, but first of all, we'll talk about sleeping in the down jacket too. So I use this down jacket. Um, it's 850 fill, but the fill isn't really what's important. The loft of the down is what's important. You want a jacket that has a lot of down in it. So it should be puffier and bigger, not these kind of 800 fill skinny jackets that have a little bit of down. They're not going to be warm enough. We have a good down jacket video we can send you. Uh, we can send you blogs on all these pieces of kit and boots and everything. But you definitely want to have the right down jacket. It's got to be light. You've got to be carrying it in your day pack. You're going to be wearing it. And it's going to be one of the most important pieces of kit that you have. So you've got to have the right down jacket. And we can help you get that jacket, um, the right one for you. Um, I'll also have with me, like on the trail lower down, it's very dusty uh, walking in sometimes, depending on the month. Um, I like to have a buff that I can just cover my mouth and just not have to, people are spreading germs all the time. There's dust on the trails. It's good to have this to keep your neck warm um, and just have this option lower down. It's not so warm. And then when you're higher up, it's good to have this kind of fleece line buff. Keeps your throat warm. You're inhaling a lot of cold air. So it's important to keep your neck warm, keep your mouth covered so that you're keeping moisture in your mouth. Um, really, really important. Uh, I used this on Everest and I didn't get the kombu cough when there was everyone around me was coughing. I tried to keep this over my mouth, kept moisture in there, made a big difference. So buffs, really, really important. So on top of that, um, you're going to be wearing a helmet. <clears throat> You've got mountaineering gear with you. Um, when you're on the mountain, you're going to be wearing like a light uh, fleece lined hat like this. Uh, some people like the thicker hats that are a little bit warmer, but then it can be too hot on the way down, depending on the time of year you're going. So I like to have options, lighter one and the thicker one. Um, more than likely I'm using this, this layer with the helmet on top. Uh, and then I can use this for kind of around the camp, walking into base camp, um, walking up Kalapatar, going into Island Peak, whatever, I got options here. So these are the two kind of hats that I will have with me. I will have some people use this option where they have a balaclava um, option with the kind of neoprene face mask. Uh, keeps moisture in, but it also keeps ice and stuff off your face if you're worried about that. Or the buffs sometimes people don't like them because they stick to your face. Um, I just don't like this because you, you can't re readjust as easy as you can the other system. So I like the buff system with the hat. Um, but this is not a bad option too for some people. It's good to try all these things out and kind of see what you like or prefer. Uh, so that is an option. In terms of the sun hat, sometimes I have a baseball hat with me. Um, I'll also have the kind of brimmed hat for keeping the sun off me, keeping the sun off my ears, off my neck. You don't want to get burnt up here and you don't want to be coming back. I've seen people with getting solar radiation on their faces and their necks and it's just draining. You've already got enough issues to deal with at altitude. You don't want to be getting sunburnt. So it's always good to have a good hat that's going to cover you from the sun. Um, let's talk about the sleeping situation first. So on our trips, you're going to be in base camp, Island Peak Base Camp for two nights. 
and then we move to the high camp for another night. And then sometimes if people are not feeling it, they come back down and spend another night in base camp before moving back to the trail. So potentially you can be there for four nights. So your comfort at 17,000 feet and up to 18 and a half at high camp uh, is kind of important. So I always bring this air mattress two inches thick. Um, it does take up a lot of space in the bag, but if you're not sleeping in base camp and then you're not sleeping higher, you're gonna be super tired you're not getting the right rest you need and it's going to be a problem. So sleeping is kind of important, just as important as um, exercising and climbing the mountain. So definitely think about a thermorest, investing in the right one and we can help you with that. So on top of that, um, you want to have a good sleeping bag. Uh, you can see this one is quite big. Um, this is a, a marmot call. It's taking up a lot of space. It takes up a lot of space in the tent or in the lodges, but it's really important to have a, a really good sleeping bag. This is a goose down sleeping bag. It's rated to zero degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I want to be comfortable. When I'm sleeping, I want to be warm. Um, if it's, it's probably overkill in the lodges lower down in the trail, but I can easily just open up the sleeping bag and you know manage my temperature that way. I don't need to wear the base layers in the sleeping bag at that's lower down and I can just manage my temperature correctly. But you want to be warm when you need to be warm. So I always want to have a good sleeping bag. We rent these um, out of our office in Kathmandu. So it's possible to rent Thermares, sleeping bags, all that stuff. So, but you don't want to compromise on sleeping. So always worth investing in a good sleeping bag and we can help you pick out the right one for you. Um, so that's sleeping, boots, layers, into the hands, which are kind of a challenge in Island Peak for a lot of people. Um, you're gonna be, depending on the, the time of year, it can be super warm when you come off the head wall uh, and you're abseiling and all the layers and all the gloves are like overheating and you're sweating. But then you can be there when it's freezing cold. I was there twice this season and the temperature between the 4th of October and the end of October was drastically different. And this October was a lot colder. November was a lot warmer and not super warm, but the temperatures can change all the time. So you never know what you're going to get dealt. Uh, and don't listen to the people that tell you that the temperature is going to be this or that. They, it can be all over the place. So it's different all the time. And it's always different depending on what time you get on the glacier. If you're leaving from high camp or lower down, you're going to be in different conditions. So you need to have options. So I like to have these gloves, liner gloves, um, I also like to have a lighter liner glove that I can slot into the bigger gloves. Um, so when I'm taking my hands out and I want to take a picture, um, it's easy to do. When I'm using equipment, if I'm adjusting my crampons or I'm adjusting my harness, it's easier to do those adjustments with the lighter gloves and not the bigger ones. So always good to have a couple of pairs of these if they rip or break. A range of layers like a lighter one and then something like this that has grips on them. Um, I like these ones. These are head uh, gl liner gloves, uh, icebreaker do liner gloves. There's loads of different options, but I definitely have a couple of pairs of these. Um, sometimes, depending on the time of year, I like to use a liner glove with these Hestra gloves. They're easy to use, cramp uh, easy to mess with the crampons, easy to, to screw gates, um, use the screw gates and the carabiners, easier to hold on to a Jumar for Jumaring. Um, easier just to do things with a rope with with climbing equipment so you want to think about what is the right glove easy to abseil good uh, uh, hand grips so you can really get a good grip of the rope when you're abseiling uh, down so you got to think about the glove options and you don't want your hands going cold so i have the liners i have these and then i have another pair of kind of warmer uh, black diamond gloves now some people go for the if they're really worried about their hands you'll, and it's colder month, you can go with the Black Diamond Guide Gloves. These are a Black Diamond Legend Glove and they're still really warm and I can do, still do all the work that I need to do. I can still abseil with the rope. Uh, I can still change uh, equipment and mess around with crampons uh, with these on. So a lot of people go for mitts. You can use mitts for going up, but when you're actually on the head wall using equipment where your safety is at stake, you definitely want to be able to use a glove that um, just is usable in those conditions. And I like this type of glove with the fingers 
um, and these are a super warm glove. So using black diamond gloves, there's Hester gloves, there's liner gloves, you need all these options and your hands are going to be super important uh, high on the mountain. So picking the right glove, we can help you do that. A uh, few other things, a lot of people like to separate their gear, underwear, socks, base layers, keeping everything separate and labeling everything so you can kind of keep everything organized in your bag. Pretty good idea, something to think about um, and worth doing. You also want to have some plastic bags with you. Um, different reasons, holding onto dirty clothes, whatever. You can use, put the, the camp shoes into the bag so they're not dirty and getting all your other clothes dirty. That's something useful. So having some plastic bags, having some uh, storage bags, really important. Um, there's lots of other little bits and pieces that we have lined out on our, in our dossier that we're not going to talk about here. Um, we can take you through all those, but a few more items, head torch, worth having two of them, worth having a spare pair of uh, batteries, really, really important, you're going to use it in the lodges at night, going to the bathroom, in the tent, all sorts of situations, so you definitely need two of those. Um, glasses, I like to have two pairs with me, just in case I break one or lose one. Um, I like to have the uh, protection on the side so that sunlight can't bounce off the, the snow or glacier and get into my eyes. I like the wraparound style. Uh, these are category four, super dark. I like them as dark as I possibly can get them and kind of more durable and bendable if I did sit in them. Uh, these ones are great and we can help you get the right ones for you. So I'll have two pairs of those. Um, a couple of other smaller things. Uh, you'll have a toiletries bag, trying to keep it minimal. Um, we, can, we have it listed what you need. I'll have one of those. I'll have a medical kit, hand sanitizer, medications, um, ibuprofens and uh, we, we, lip balm, sun cream, all this sort of stuff. We have it all listed out. But you'll definitely need a medical kit. You'll need all these items with you um, just in case. And, We'll help you understand what's needed and what's required for the trip. And I'll have that with me. A um, couple options on the lodges do your allowed charge. They charge you for it. Um, but you might want to have an option of having a solar panel with a option to charge all your stuff so you're not paying um, crazy amounts to charge everything up. This is worth it. Super light. Some people go with a bigger solar panel and then one of these, which is just the power bank. Um, which will give you anywhere, for, it depends on what you buy, but this one has up to like 10 charges. Um, so you got options in terms of that, but I need to keep satellite phones charged, GPS devices, all that stuff. So good idea to think about what to bring on that front. Um, and then prop, last but not least, um, hydration. Um, you're going to be drinking for uh, five liters of water every day. On the trail, it's easy to kind of top up water in the morning. You can fill up this with two liters, move to, we stop at lunch, uh, or we stop for a tea break and you can fill up more. After lunch, you can fill up more and you can kind of get your hydration done early in the morning and kind of be you know, finished by three or four in the afternoon. I always like to have either one or two of these with me. Um, for Island Peak, it's kind of handy, especially higher up to have two of these because even if you put a, a cover on this hose, um, the water can still freeze in it. Um, actually, while I'm talking about that, the, having a nozzle to cover this, to keep it clean, lots of, you're putting your bag down, it's touching things, there's dust getting into it. Uh, it's good to have a cover for this to keep it clean um, so you're not getting sick from, from the water you're drinking. So you can't use this higher in the mountain. You use this all the way through the trail, all the way up to base camp. Um, but if the water did freeze for whatever reason, even on the trail, you want to have options and have your, have a Nalgene bottle. And it's good to have two of them. Um, you know, on a summer night on Island Peak, when you leave at, you know, from the high camp at two o'clock in the morning, it takes five hours to get up. It takes three hours to get back down. And then you still have to come down even further, whether it's the base camp or back to Chikung. So you, you want to have options. Like sometimes I leave the, this in the tent. Uh, with water in it, so when I come back into the tent, I can start hydrating as quickly as I can. Um, if you fill, you can't put boiling water in the Camelback, but you can put ca you can put boiling water um, in here. So you can fill two of these up with boiling water, 
by the time you get higher, they cool down. It's a good way to stay hydrated. You gotta carry them. So there's a trade-off between carrying the water and doing the climb and coming back and hydrating. But you need one or two of these. Good idea to bring two Nalgene's and bring this water system too. So I think that's it. We have actually, while I'm talking about it, all the climbing equipment on our trips is, um, is included. So you don't need to bring any of the, like whether it's crampons, helmets, ice axes, you're gonna be using a Jumar um, for climbing and ascending. You're gonna be using a carabiner with a figure of eight for abseiling. Um, and you're gonna have safety lines on your harness. We have all this included in our trips. Some people like to bring their crampons and bring some equipment. That's totally fine. That's just trying to manage the weight um, in the bags and we can talk you through that and help you with that. So that's pretty much all the gear that I'll bring in an Island Peak trip. Um, we run, it depends, six, seven trips a year and about three or four private trips too. Uh, we've been doing it for a long time. Um, we, as I said, I've been up Everest, been up Island Peak over 15 times. So we're happy to help you. If you just get in touch with us, we'll help you kind of map out your training, map out your plan, map out the right gear that you need to come on the trip. So we're happy to talk to you. Uh, just pick up the phone, get on our website at ianteilertrekking.com and we'd love to talk to you.